All right, I think I'm live. Boy, I hate this YouTube thing. Here, there, I'm live. It's hard to tell if I'm live. We're going to talk about the Oscars, the 2022 Oscars, which I wasn't going to do a video on it, but I decided to because a number of people asked me, what is your view of this? And I don't really care what my own view of the 2022 Oscars is. But uh, a number of people were like, whoa, what, what's going on? What do you think about this? Actually, I wanted to get into the Oscars, the awards they gave, what it means for the future, uh, whether anybody cares. There's a very interesting article I want to talk about from the New York Times. It's actually an opinion piece because it's about the end of movies. This is a, the uh, headline of the article. So I'm going to dig into this article in just a little bit here. And, and we're going to deal with this and the Oscars in this live video, which I hope will be pretty, I think will be very interesting. Um, and I'll look at your, um, I'll look at the chat as well. Uh, here in just a little bit so welcome everyone for those of you here i really appreciate your viewing and first of all i want to do a couple things so bear with me or skip ahead if you don't want to see these couple things but subscribe here uh, to the channel and if you like the channel go over to letterboxd and check out my stuff which you know i'm reviewing or basically doing small or short write-ups on letterboxd which is a very nice website i know a lot of you use it but I really like it and if I like your stuff or if I see you're on there sometimes I miss people who are you know friending me but I will um, read your stuff follow you that I, I really appreciate this website because it's an interesting network a personal connection that this website allows so there you go um, let me check first of all let me get over here I never know if YouTube is working or not there hello from Iran Wow okay great to see, great to see you all there <laughs> very good um, so the other thing okay so i just want to show you this this semester we're having a film critic come in where he's going to talk about the secret of kill so i'm actually screening this movie today for a few people who wanted to i haven't seen this in 10 maybe 15 years so i'm excited to re-watch this again um and our critic I, I should actually give him a shout out i need to link to him jeffrey overstreet is coming to dort my university <clears throat> he's going to talk about this movie which i have never seen the fits have you seen this movie? This came out five or six years ago. So this is the movie we're gonna deal with on Friday. Uh, just so you know, my some of my the movies I'm screening: The Breakfast Club, Wally. -E. Okay, these are the, my two Hollywood movies, and then and then I'm going to try this, which is to sorry about the glare. Um, Umberto D, which I absolutely love um, the neo realists. You know, and so there's a movie about an old man, and then another movie about an old man, uh, The Father, which I really love. I'm really excited to dig into this. I've only seen it once, but I thought it was an amazing movie. And then um, Thin Red Line, I'm going to do this one, and Chung King Express in my class. So those are the, well, it's a half semester class, so those are the six. All right, so I want to get into the Oscars now, and let's see if we can pull this up and uh, check it out here. By the way, leave a comment or questions in the comments. I will respond to those in a little bit. Uh, so, you know, the Oscars, okay, so Will Smith slaps Chris Rock. That's all anybody re will remember from this or it will become a meme. I actually enjoyed the, I have a perverse enjoyment of the meme showing up with Will Smith hitting uh, Chris Rock, which is in my thumbnail for the video. And now everyone's debating the morality of this as if, you know, it's, it's a complex moral situation. You, you've insulted a woman who has a genetic disease, and what, what do you do as a husband when, you, when that happens in front of your face with your wife present? Okay, moral conundrum, plus it's a, on a public stage, a massive event, and um, frankly, I don't know <laughs> what, what I would have done. But there are a couple of things out of this I appreciated. If, if you can appreciate anything about this absurd incident. And one is that a number, a great number of people thought it was staged. And I must applaud, whether it was just Americans or people around the world, for thinking this was staged. And the reason why is it's nice to have a, a, a decent dose of paranoia, not a lot of paranoia, some, and to also think critically. And to think about the motivations, the benefits that would accrue to these people or the Oscars if this were a staged event. Um, and to think about the incentives for these people. So I don't personally think it was staged. I do think it was, it, it happened uh, um, w without any you know, foreknowledge. 
Um, I, but I'm not, you know, there's some, there's some evidence there that says maybe we shouldn't be sure of that. Nevertheless, I'm, I'm happy that people thought it was possibly staged. The reason why is not to have a decent level of distrust for so-called cultural elites. I appreciate that sort of thing somewhat. So I was, I was heartened to see that because I think if this would have happened 10, 15 years ago, uh, no one would have thought about it that way. Um, I, I think mo most people would have thought it would have been real. Um, it, it, would, it wouldn't have been a public suspicion about it. Um, the, the other thing was, it, it, there's just a lot of old people here. Will Smith, I was thinking about Independence Day, and didn't he slap an alien in that? <laughs> well, that was 1997. Chris Rock, when did I see him on Saturday Night Live? You know, these two guys are older than me, and they're talking about a movie, G.I. Jane, that is completely forgettable, one of Ridley Scott's worst movies, perhaps, or at least a lot of people would say that. And so, you know, everything is old here. The G.I. Jane joke, who is going to get that who is under 40 years old? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, so it was a very strange incident. But what will happen, and this is what's great about thinking this was staged, is that I think everyone's going to benefit from this. The Oscars, you know, they got some publicity. There's no such thing as bad publicity, mostly. And Will Smith, I don't know what's going to happen to his career. Maybe it will tank, but I think over time, <laughs> he's going to have the meme, which is going to show up all over the place, and, and people know who he is. I mean, he got a lot of notoriety, name recognition. I'm sure the sales of his movies or something like that is going to go up. I saw, when I was reading about this, Chris Rock's ticket sales went up. His <laughs> stand-up comedy ticket sales. Why? It has nothing to do with Chris. I mean, it's just because he's got notoriety now. He's got publicity. So I'm sure there's a lot of benefits, unfortunately, that are coming out of this. Now, when we go into the actual awards, I mean, first of all, they did remove, and you know, I, I don't really don't care about the Oscars. I think they're they're okay uh, as a... As, we need an award. We need, do need a yearly award, and this is the best that we've got for now, okay? But they did remove a number of categories from the live. It, 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 even though they removed these categories, the broadcast went 30 minutes longer than the last one, which was the poorest rated Oscars by far ever. They have a three hour, 45 minute broadcast. Why? I don't know. And they got rid of the categories that I personally like, which I know a lot of people don't care, but sound, editing, and so on. Documentary. I f actually forget which ones they were showing because I didn't watch it, by the way. Um, but they did remove a number of categories. So uh, I got to get into the awards. I wanted to show and comment on these awards that they gave. Uh, where is this at? Oh, there. Winners and nominees. Okay. So, one thing about the Oscars it's, is that they nominate, or excuse me, they, they award movies in the last 15 years that are entirely forgettable. And they, I think they all come to the least common denominator consensus. Now, who's voting on these awards? I am not entirely sure, besides the Academy. And is it most skewed towards the old people? I don't know, but they picked CODA over all these other ones. And I personally was for Dune because I'm in favor of science fiction, just decent science fiction. I wasn't in love with the first Dune movie, but I thought it was, if you're gonna award a movie here, by the way, now I should t say this to you. Let me pull this off the screen for a minute. I watched The French Dispatch uh, about three weeks ago. So I am behind. I am always behind and I'm still watching movies from last year. I'm going to watch the movie Come On, Come On on Friday. Okay. I still have yet to see a couple of it. Like, drive my car, I'm still going to watch that. So, note, I am a cultural historian more so than a film critic. That's the way you should probably think about me, because I'm not up on the times. I'm riding behind the wave. Anyway, so, I watched The French Dispatch about three weeks ago, and I thought, the first thought I had was, this is Citizen Kane. Now, it's not maybe the level of Citizen Kane in terms of the, the profundity of it, but it's an amazing piece of artwork, a uh, complex film. Um, I'm not sure how everything in it worked, but French Dispatch did not get nominated, and these are the people who award quality. And that had the highest bar of you know difficulty of perhaps of most movies. Dune had a very high bar of difficulty as well to pull off and make look really good and watchable and all that. French Dispatch to have zero nominations in the Best Picture category to me was a travesty. 
Now, I had said that for The Hand of God, which I really like too, and I'm sure there's a number of other films from last year that were really, really good that deserved to be nominated that weren't. So I have no doubt about it. The, the nominee list is not great. Um, just so you know, my personal preference, I wish The French Dispatch, and you should try to watch that. It may be off-putting for a number of reasons, and of course it's three short stories kind of tied together by the magazine you know, trope. So anyway, uh, I appreciated that movie a lot, and I, I figure, come on, come on, or some other movie like that is going to blow me away, and then I'm going to look at the Best Picture nominee list and go, well, this is pretty bad. So anyway, there you go. Coda won. Will people remember it in 10 years? Probably not. I mean, I looked at the Best Picture list. Green Book. Does anybody remember Green Book? I really did not like that movie. You can go read why on Letterboxd. I thought it was pretty bad. If you look at the Best Picture winner, let me try this out. Uh, let's look at the Best Picture Oscars. The From the last 15 years, not so great. Uh, well, it's take me a little while here, but my memory of it is uh, The Shape of Water. Um, I've done this before on this channel, but just to go through it again. No, yeah, Nomadland. Oh, man, that looks bad now in retrospect. Oh, gosh. 2020. I love The Father. I like Judas and the Black Messiah. I thought Minaria was pretty good. And I really like Sound of Metal on rewatching. Re My students liked it. I would probably pick those over Nomadland, although I should pr I'll probably rewatch Nomadland. But, uh, man, it is hard. The Father is an amazing movie. Sound of Metal is good. Oh. I gotta rethink that. Now, this one is controversial because a lot of people love Parasite, so I didn't, but. Parasite one, there's Green Book, Shape of Water, Moonlight, Spotlight. Boy, should Spotlight have won over those that crowd? I'm gonna think about that one. That, that's a tough one. Birdman, I actually really did like. So we go back, 12 Years a Slave. Ooh, 12 Years a Slave over her in Nebraska, which I like a lot. Anyway, so Argo. Okay, so these are forgettable movies? Maybe, some of them at least. And I wonder if Coda will be right in that spot of being good for the moment. A lot of people like it, heartfelt movie, but it's going to not look as good in retrospect. I wonder about that. Now, clearly the Oscars were giving, and here, here's a little political commentary for you, giving Oscars to, um, um, they, they were trying to diversify the Oscars, let's put it that way. So female won Best Director, and fine, I don't care. Um, I wonder her over uh, Hamaguchi or Anderson, and Spielberg's always good in terms of directing, not necessarily story. So that's an interesting choice. Uh, best Actor. Will Smith, right, over all these other people, which, okay, whatever, and so on and so forth. And so you get a diverse cast list, and nevertheless, I saw that they were accusing the Oscars of being too white, nevertheless. Why? I don't know. This is always going to be a charge, apparently. But you look at this list, you go, well, best original screenplay for Belfast. Was that really the best screenplay of last year? Oh, man. I, I Honestly, read... The French Dispatch script and tell me that is not a lot better than this. I, I wonder about choices like this where they didn't nominate a really, really good script. Anyway, uh, Dune did not win Best Adaptation. Okay. It's really hard to adapt the novel Dune. And a lot of people love this movie. <laughs> I mean, I think... I think there's some suspect choices. Of course, some of you know this. I love the Mitchells versus the Machines. I thought that was quite clever. I thought it had great commentary versus Encanto. A Disney movie that didn't quite work for me in it for a number of reasons. But maybe no one cares about animated feature. At least they did nominate Mitchells versus the Machines. At least they nominated Hand of God. Okay, now what's always helpful to me is to go back over time and look at the nominee list and get ideas. And today I just, on my channel, I released another video on a movie called Footnote from Israel. And I know nobody on this channel, or very few people have watched that movie. It was nominated for Best Foreign or International Feature about 10 or 11 years ago. 
footnote. Go look this up on my channel because it's a good, it's a really good movie. And the way you can find it is because it was nominated. So I have not seen these movies. I, uh, I've heard Worst Person in the World is quite good. But Luana, A Yak in the Classroom from Bhutan? I don't know what that is, but it prompts me to want to go see it because it was nominated. So I hope this nominee list is pretty good, nevertheless. Anyway, you go on down the list, and I wonder what you all think. What do you all think of this? Um, so, Best Original Score, Hans Zimmer, finally. Best Original Song, they did not give it to Encanto, which is a shock because, as you know, some of those Encanto songs have become, you know, popular on TikTok or whatever. And the list goes on. And so Dune finally wins all of these technical categories, which I, I would think is correct. And, I, you know, by the way, just so you know, you know, I went through Blade Runner 2049 the other day. So here's the, on my letterbox account, I made a long tweet thread. And just an experiment on my part. I, I've never really writ written a tweet thread. I kind of like, but kind of don't like Blade Runner 2049. And you'll see why when you browse through this tweet thread. But one of the things they said in there was that anytime Villeneuve, forgive me for mis mispronouncing, by the way, people always complain about that, but the director, Villeneuve, um, whenever he makes a movie, he ought to win, they just ought to give him sound and cinematography every time. Because it's going to be the best movie, or the best looking movie, and the best sound movie. Now, a French Dispatch could compete and probably does in the eyes of many, or, or there's probably some others that for best production design. The fact that French Dispatch wasn't in here is a travesty in my opinion. Anyway, so Villeneuve is always good and Dune wins all these categories, um, which I find interesting, cinematography. You know, that's, a, that's always a very interesting category, which I'm sure they shelved in, uh, in film editing too. People don't know much about film editing, and I don't know the editors, but I do know the films, and the editing is interesting. So, um, Dune won for that. I wonder about that one, too. I think there's better editing, but anyway, visual effects, Dune won for sure. So anyway, there's your overview, but the Oscars are super old now. Super, super old. And the question is, are they decaying, or are they a sign of decaying, or movies decaying? Is the Holly really the question is is the Hollywood system decaying? And that's where this article or really opinion piece came up came up. We're watching the end of movies. Kind of a gimmicky, clickbaitish headline. That's not exactly what the opinion piece says. He doesn't say that movies are ending entirely and that they're going to disappear. He just says one thing he says, I'll I'll scroll through the article and show you some highlights. One thing he says is that the Hollywood system is in decline. And he makes some interesting comments. I thought this overall was not very intelligent because he is not in touch with what I'm in touch with that I know a number, a great number of young people love movies. There's a great number of young men who love movies. In fact, this channel, my particular channel, small time thing, but the channel is encouraging and young men to watch movies and a number of young men around the entire world or interested in watching movies. Whether that's because they got into video f via YouTube or TikTok or video games and then went to movies or the other way around, I don't know, but I think movies will continue to have a great, strong attraction. And they will last at least another generation or two, for sure. In the Hollywood system, there's no better system for producing things than Hollywood still. Whether you hate or love it, you may hate its politics, but it's, it's ma the movie magic is made there they're excellent, and the Chinese aren't replacing it anytime soon. I'm not sure about India and, and other countries, but I think Hollywood is by dominant still. Um, but they are getting old. They are getting old. So anyway, he says in here, let's look at a number of things. Um, everyone has a theory about the decline of the Academy Awards. Okay. Sure. Me too. But he, he goes in and he, he, he sort of praises the 80s through the 90s as sort of a heyday for movies which I found interesting, but I wonder how much he's, you know, he's at odds with some things here. Anyway, so the Oscar race uh, used to be, always one of the good old days arguments, used to be in the 1990s that you had Oscar races in which every moviegoer had a stake. Titanic against LA Confidential. <laughs> Saving Private Ryan against Shakespeare in Love. Does anybody remember Shakespeare in Love? Take Shakespeare in Love, 
Place it against any A24 movie from the last five years. The A24 movies, most of them are way better, in my opinion, than Shakespeare in Love. Anyway, Braveheart, sense of sensibility. <laughs> okay. Anyway, he says, well, you know, these Oscar races back then, everybody could be invested in. Of course, that's when th there was not cultural fragmentation. Everyone's still paying attention to very to the uh, centrally controlled or c the central node that was Hollywood. Now we we have people watching YouTube, TikTok, video games, etc., etc., etc. I mean, this cultural fragmentation isn't bad at all, in my opinion. And movies are still dominating. They're still making tons of money. Some of them are Marvel. I love it or hate it. Anyway, and then he goes in and says, well, the 10 Best Picture nominees, they look like the kind of Oscar movies that this show, the Oscars, desperately needs. And they actually says that the not Oscar nominations are this high middle brow film that used to be from the 80s and 90s, most of them at least. Don't look up, which was, you know, anybody can watch that movie. They may not like it. But it has some things in King, King Richard, West Side Story, same things. <laughs> anyway, uh, scroll down through here. Nominees, blah, 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 blah. Uh, within the, here we are. Within the larger arc of Hollywood history, though, this is the time to call it. We are, aren't just watching the decline of Oscars. We're watching the end. Oh, he actually says this. Never mind. He, we are watching the end capital of movies. Now, he, he actually doesn't mean end the end. Um... That ending doesn't mean that motion pictures are about to disappear. Just as historical events have continued, so too will self-contained, roughly two-hour stories continue to play on screens for people's entertainment as one product among many. Right, so there will be movies, TikTok videos, Instagram, whatever else there is in the world. Right. What is finished is capital the movies. Big screen entertainment as the central American popular art form. So with Hollywood dominating or being the dominant cultural industry for America and the and the whole world, you have major stars that everybody in the world knew, going back to Charlie Chaplin, the most famous man in the world in the 19 teens and 20s. And nowadays, will we have the kind of movie stars who command attention and, and sort of be the pseudo monarchs or pseudo princes and princesses of our modern world? Uh, he claims that that will, that will end, and maybe that's true. Maybe it is true. The end has been coming, foreshadowed in the spread of television, the invention of the VC... Well, come a long time. That's like 80 years in coming, by the way. <laughs> anyway, uh, the invention of the VCR, the rise of cable TV, it's the pictures that got small. All right, so he goes on and he says, well, back in the 80s and 90s, you had true glory, real celebrity, artistic acclaim. You had Robert Altman, Bruce Willis, Shelley Long... <laughs> or David Cruz, or whatever. The late 90s were this cultural order's years of twilight glow. Now, I have to say this is a little bit of a trap. Now that I'm old enough to know this, 40 years old, I know that when you go say, well, back when I was in college, things were better. Something was better. I liked it better then. It's a personal trap because it could be just you and your hallucination. Maybe 1980s was better, technically. I personally find, here is a big statement for me, that the last 15 years of movies is way better than the 1990s. I just think that. Um, if you look at, and again, line up all the A24 movies and the best movies internationally and so on, give me the top 100 list from the last 10 years. Let's say the 2010s. Okay, the 2010s. Well, top 100 movies then, top 100 movies in the 1990s. I think the 2010s is better. Technically, one technically, and two from a quality, rich, literary perspective. That's my guess, but I've investigated this. I wanted to see for myself. Because I was under the nostalgia trap, too, for a while. Oh, yeah, they can't write any more screenplays. Nothing's original in Hollywood anymore. Then I went and looked at it. I thought, man, the 2010s was pretty good. Pretty good. It was a pretty good. I wouldn't say that's the best decade ever, but I don't think this is right at all. And I think the quality of movies. If we go back to this list, look, I, I was just stunned when I looked at it, like that right there. And that's not all from 2020, people. Okay, that that's not it. Uh, I didn't like a couple movies in this list, but this is a pretty killer list. 
And to say that the 1990s was sort of better? No. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of stuff he, that he goes into here. And he's praising movies. Austin Powers to The Matrix. I mean, anyway. I, I'm a little put off by this article because I know, one, movies are quite good now still if you're looking for them. Two, that a great number of young people are interested in movies. And while the Hollywood system may be in decay as far as the star system and what they're producing in terms of these huge blockbuster movies, okay, maybe the blockbuster movies aren't as good as they used to be. That could be. I don't know. But I don't think he is correct that movies are going away. I still think people clamor for, one, movie stars, and two, for good entertainment. And um, Hollywood probably needs to integrate with TikTok more. And I think they will. Maybe. If they care about money, <laughs> they will. But, you know, they need to intera inter interact and, and integrate themselves more with what young people, the 15-year-olds, are interested in to some extent, so that they can hook the 15-year-olds on movies and get them in and get them watching them. But I'm interested in your opinions on this stuff because um, this is one of those articles that's the end of something. Not quite the end, but he does say the end, and it's a nostalgia exercise. I, I'm under the opinion that things develop and can develop still. So there you go. Anyway, that's all for me to rant about. Let's look at what's live. Oh, there's a lot of people here. This is fabulous. <laughs> I'm going to look at the chat now. I am interested in uh, what you're saying here. So let me read some of the chat. I have. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going to go to the interesting ones. Uh, not. I can't read all of these uh, comments, but this is going to be fun. Uh, I am doing great. Thank you for those from Iran, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You guys are great. I love Iranian movies. I wish I could visit Iran. Iran, Iran, I'm sorry for the Prince Nation, watch it someday. They should have kicked Will Smith out. Yeah, probably. I mean, you should not assault. So here's a personal opinion. You should not go assault somebody on stage. Bad behavior. You don't want to encourage it. It sets a bad precedent. Um, the time, the, the, the tradition has been to throw stuff at people, which even that's distasteful. But it's also a moral problem that, he, that Chris Rock insulted his wife. I get that. I would probably be offended myself, especially when you're making a joke about somebody's genetic disease that they can't help, but whatever. All right. Yeah. It, it. By the way, this is one of the reasons I don't care much about actors' personal lives. Um, they do their work. They do a great job or not as actors, but their personal lives are different from their acting. So I am under the, I'm under the opinion or belief that most actors aren't the best people in their lives. And, and their personal lives. Anyway. Um, look at all these people interested in <laughs> Will Smith. You've never seen... G so one commenter says, I've never seen G.I. Jane. Oh, let's check out G.I. Jane. My memory of it was it was pretty bad. It was about um, a woman who enlisted in the U.S. military, if I remember correctly. I watched this when I was in college because it came out right when I was in college. Ridley Scott was, you know, a guy back then. G.I. Jane. Here's how old this movie is. Oh, sorry about that. It's flashing my the trailer here. Uh, 1997. How old is that? 25 years old. So Chris Rock is making a joke about a bad movie. 6.0 out of 10 uh, from 25 years ago. Again, only people over 35 or 40 will get any reference to this, and most of them probably forgot about this movie. Notice that the male testosterone-heavy rankings on IMDb, they tend to rank military movies a little bit higher, a little bit better. They still do not like this movie on IMDb. 6.0 out of 10 is terrible, or pretty bad. It's pretty bad for a Hollywood movie. Oh, Viggo Mortensen is in this. And Bancroft is in this? <laughs> Okay, and John Michael Higgins. This is a weird cast already. Um, oh, this is interesting. Okay, yeah, when a crusading chairperson, uh, the blah, blah, blah. Whoa, that's that's even a, a lot of girl but a gook right there. Okay, a female trainee goes to become a SEAL. There you go. So can women be a Navy SEAL? <laughs> this movie was early on the 
so that the uh, women can do it too in the military stuff later on of course 10 years at what point did they the u.s start having women in the military in, in not just active duty and being nurses and whatnot but actually being on the front lines i think that was fairly recently anyway so pretty bad movie gi jane uh room and mad max were excellent you know i'm I gotta rewatch Mad Max. Uh, that's one I have not seen in a long time. Yeah, I I have this. Here's a comment I have a lot. Countries uh, Hollywood does not like Iran or Persians. How would I know? I'm not in Hollywood. I don't know. I don't know hardly anybody in Hollywood. And why would they be biased against Iranians? That could be just American bias, by the way. Right, you know, we've been at war or hated Iran. They've been an axis of evil country for a long time. I personally don't think that. I think Iranians are great, mostly. I don't probably don't like their government or what I know about it. But you know, Persians have made great art for a long, long time. So I, I don't know this if this claim is true, but I get this a lot on this channel that Hollywood does not like Iranians. That maybe you may be seeing a pattern of behavior like they just don't nominate. Iranian movies, and of course the movie A Hero by the Iranian director uh, Farhadi. I may be mispronouncing that, but A Hero on Amazon is quite, quite good. I would have put it in the Best Picture nominee list. I liked it that much. Yeah. <laughs> We're also watching The Decline of the New York Times. See, to me, this is interesting. I believe that New York Times and Hollywood are in league, in, in a sense. They're like the cultural the elite cultural institutions in America. So they both represent whatever the elites are, perhaps. And if they're in, one's in decay, the other probably is. Yeah. So for the New York Times to criticize, I don't know what they're criticizing Hollywood for, but that's the conservative writer, quote unquote, in the New York Times. Um, yeah, yeah. Really interesting stuff down here at the bottom. If one of your students drops out of your class to learn about cinema by himself, what would you think of that? That's what I did, and I think I've learned way more by myself. Yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Um, it depends on the person. You know, in college, I think a lot of people are motivated to learn by social pressure. So it's pretty hard. Uh, the dream of, of learning on the internet by yourself is great for one thing and an education on the internet is great do it go get educated in anything on the internet because you can i don't think most people at least today this may change over time but today are as are capable of self-learning and the discipline of doing self-learning um now that may be i'm maybe talking just about young people middle age i don't know but if you're a young person 20 years old, uh, you probably need some social pressure, uh, whether that's the incentive to get grades, whether that's being around other people who are interested in the subject matter, which gets you interested because, you know, there's a sort of a spirit of learning there, or whether it's a professor who inspires you. But I think uh, some people should drop out of college or take a gap year for sure. There's no doubt about it. And probably there's too many people going to college is my opinion. Um, even though that would be against my own interest, I do think probably, and I don't know about my school, but there's a number of people who go to college for the sake of going to college, university, or because their parents want them to go or something like that, or they think they, that's the way to get a job. But yeah, I would be fine with you dropping out and going to learn by yourself um, as long as you can apply it uh, or as long as you do something with it, uh, that would be helpful to you. But even just learning for the sake of learning is great. So I don't have a problem with you doing whatever you want to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I never saw G.I. Jean either. The premise sounds silly. Yeah, I don't remember if um, Demi Moore looked ridiculous as a Navy SEAL or not. I'm sure there are some women who could become Navy SEALs, but I forget. You can come to Iran. There are tons of vlogs on YouTube. You can see we would love tourists in our country. Yeah, how easy is it to be a tourist nowadays in Iran? I have no idea what the U.S. government thinks of that. If they care, if they're going to investigate me for going. 
<laughs> yeah, the confirmation bias, um, for sure. Now, here's one more thing I want to do real quickly. All right. So let's go to Letterboxd. I did this exercise in a previous video, but I think it's worth doing still. Once you go to Letterboxd, I want to look at the, the movies from this past year. All right. Let's, in fact, let's go to 2020. This is my list. I don't want to see what I say. I want to see what everyone else says. Um, these are the movies I watched. How do I get rid of that? Well, okay. It's going to take me a little time, but I wanted to, in fact, let's just go to this. A24. I wanted to see what was released last year because I think we were missing a lot of great movies. And I think they th think they're not represented well on the list. Well, here's A24 films. Okay. Now, you tell me. Now, this is just A24. I know there's a number of other companies in the world or a number of studios, etc. But have any of you seen any of these and what do you think? So, I think most of these are worth watching for you guys or you people watching this channel the ones that I've seen, all right? There's a lot of these I have not seen, but notice Midsummer, Last Black Man in San Francisco, The Lighthouse people loved, Uncut Gems, I thought was pretty good. In fact, really good, I really like that movie. Minari, I kinda liked. And the list goes on. Now, if there are New York Times writer looked at this list, the question for him would be, is this, li is this list too narrow for tastes? In, in fact, could most adults stomach these movies or not? Or is A24 for a narrower range of people? Cinephiles, movie lovers, but not really for your ordinary person, whoever that is. Uh, your casual moviegoer. And that's an interesting question. I wonder if A24 is a little too highbrow uh, for the ordinary moviegoing public. Because the New York Times writer was claiming, oh, he's got a great line here. I just wanted to show you this about Titanic. This, okay. This paragraph, Oscar viewership rose from the late 80s, peaking in 1998 when Titanic won Best Picture, which, despite its snobbish detractors, was also a victory for the movies as a whole. Classic Hollywood meeting special effects era, bringing the whole country, now this is USA focused, by the way, to the multiplex for an experience that simply wouldn't have been the same in a living room. To be a teenager in that era is to experience the movie still as a place, key place of initiation. Okay, as if movies need to be a place of initiation. By the way, I've been showing Buster Keaton shorts, which are 100 years old to my own children, and my 8-year-old said yesterday, I love Buster Keaton, I think he's hilarious. Okay, so do movies need to be a place of initiation, or do they just need to be not just entertainment, but really informative, rich, elusive, literary stuff that really broadens you as a person? That's what I hope for you guys, and that's what I think movies can be. So I don't really care about Con Air executive decision or eyes wide shut. Anyway, he, he mentions a number of movies here, and it, these aren't high quality movies in my opinion. They're okay, some of them, but they're not high quality. And when he says that Titanic was like the peak, <laughs> whoa, whoa. I know Titanic has a lot of culturally iconic stuff in it that are still quoted, okay? But Titanic is a... It's not that great. It's a great movie with uh, in terms of production value. It, yeah. I'm struggling with this because I'm one of the snobbish detractors. And this word snobbish is just absurd in the here. It's like if you don't like Titanic, you're snobbish. Or if you detract from it, you're snobbish. I was a little put off by that. So I look at that and I go, oh, this is initiation. I'm looking at this channel, a number of people are doing other podcasts and videos. And I know a number of young people who are in love with this stuff, whether it's a movie I don't like, which is The Green Knight, or Uncut Gems, or whatever. And these are movies that people are in love with. They're really getting into movies because of th this stuff. Uh, wh whether it's broad and all people are doing this, or whether a few people are, oh well. Because I don't think when, you, when A24 generates moviegoers when they're making this great stuff that people watch Psh, great um whether everybody needs to be involved or not is not a big deal so and i believe 
if it's a great movie, it ought to la- it'll probably last for a while. Probably. If it speaks to people in the future, it will last. And I bet something in this list will last 50, 50 years, 100 years. I, I wonder if in 100 years, people will still be, if still, people are still watching movies, which they probably will be, and holograms haven't taken over, that this list right here will be invaluable. We can keep going, right? Um, <laughs> we can go all the way down to <laughs> all the stuff they've ever made in, in uh, A24. But this list will be invaluable, and, and some future moviegoer will be mining it and will be appreciating it, just as my eight-year-old appreciates, appreciates Buster Keaton or whatever. Okay. Rant over. But it, it, I found that article quite annoying because, um, yeah. 50 people, this is great. All right. I went to see the Batman. It was mediocre. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm a cranky old man too. I thought I, there's a lot of detective movies that are, I like better than that. Anyway, I did learn the bit. Okay, this is from the commenter who who said he he or she would drop out of school. He asked if I would appreciate dropping out of school or not. I learned the basics and watched a couple good movies in college, but ultimately found it way more rewarding to find good movies. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Anyway, okay. So there you go, the Oscars. We're still going to want, uh, people are still going to comment on the Oscars for the next 10, 15, 100 years. Who knows how long? But I don't think this is the end of movies. And whether people hate the Oscars or not, they're still going to be watched. Or we still need an award for best movie of the year just to get people talking, to market movies, to get people interested in something, and just call something the best is always helpful. Whether it's a good good thing or not, I do think the Oscars have greatly declined. Well, I don't know. They, they seem to have declined in quality, but maybe they were always a little iffy. And if I do look back at the 1950s Oscar winners, it is kind of iffy. So maybe they haven't declined in quality all the way, but we need a best of list. Maybe on the internet, somebody, some organization somewhere can do a better best of list. All right. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Letterboxd, my newsletter, etc. Thanks a lot for you guys. You guys are great. Really appreciate viewers on this channel. Take care. See you later.